Good morning, y'all. Sorry I'm a little late and I'm out of breath because I just got finished with the Tabata workout on the Nordic Chart bike. <laughs> I woke up late this morning and I was like, no, I have to get this in or I'll never finish today. <sighs> yeah, I was like, I've got to do this or I'm never going to finish our 75 Holy today because I've got so much to do. Y'all, I'm sweating. Woo! I'm sweating. Well, we're going to hope that it works. We're going to hope the internet works. It's hooked up. It's ready. I'm in my I'm in my office today. And we're just going to cross all of our fingers and toes that it is the best internet ever. Um, we had, I'm not a real techie person, so I'm not 100% sure exactly what this means. But <clears throat> we had 100 or 300 megs last night. Oh, first time here and new to the faith. Good morning. How was the pep rally? Um, we didn't have a pep rally yesterday, but I did dress up. So I dressed up as um just in Disney clothes because that's really the only costumey thing that I had. And it was supposed to be future career day, so I told all of them a different thing. Every time they were like, What are you? I would be like, Oh, I'm um, one time I said, I think I'm a Disney greeter. The next time I said, oh, I'm, um, what did I say? I'm a travel agent. <laughs> the next time I said I'm retired and going to Disney. So, it was funny. They're so funny. <clears throat> so, those of you who are reading through Psalms, Psalm and Proverbs, how are y'all liking it? Uh-oh. The Grand Rising, Yes. Do you celebrate Halloween? It's something that I've been on the fence about this year. We do, but we just don't bring the darkness in it. Like, I actually have a sweatshirt that I just got in the mail that I ordered from, like, a local um, boutique in Alabama off a TikTok shop. Local boutique. I mean, it's a state over, but it feels local because, you know, Mississippi and Alabama. Um, but... Anyway, I ordered it, and it's, I don't know if y'all have seen it, but it's the cute little ghost outline, and it has the Lulu bag strapped on it with the Stanley Cup. Um, I, I bought that from their boutique, and I actually think I'm going to wear it today um, for, for Tacky Day because I have these really long, like, neon, shiny biker shorts, and then I'm going to wear, like, some mixed match so socks. <clears throat> Yeah, today's reading is very timely. And it's not like a... It, I actually have something so excited to share with you guys. I've been working on this about as long as I've been working on 75 Holy. And so yesterday, y'all know I spent about three hours trying to get my YouTube. So those of you who come on and off and, and don't always make it, YouTube is up. Yesterday's recording has been posted. I... Spent three and a half hours on that yesterday trying to get it to work. Um, so, yeah, I'm very excited about that. Um, but, anyways, um, 75 Holy is a challenge that I created with Jesus in 2020. And I just launched it this Monday in um, our Patreon group. But I also talked about it on live. Like, you don't have to be on Patreon to, to participate in it. I actually need to make a video about it. I'll probably do a YouTube video to explain it and then take clips of that to make it into a TikTok video because YouTube can just, you can do a little bit more. Um, anyway, I'm so excited. So, um, let's get started and then we are going to dive into scripture this morning. And this morning we are reading 1 John chapter 2 verses 15, 15 through 17. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Um, this part is very, very self-explanatory. I say that a lot, but this part is very, 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 very self-explanatory. And so I figured this was the perfect time this morning for me to kind of show y'all how I study scripture. Um, what, how, you know, I told y'all I don't use the soap method. I study scripture a different way. Um, and it's a way that the soap method to me, um, just wasn't fitting all of the things that I like to look for in scripture and the order that I like to look for them. 
that makes me realize my place and God is God and I'm not. And so, um, anyways, I'm going to share that with y'all today. And I actually made a graphic that I'm going to upload to Patreon for all Patreons, doesn't matter what level you are, um, today for y'all to be able to download and use that. But I'm really excited about it. Um, it's the first time I've ever told anybody that I created this Bible study method. And I've been working on it for probably a little over a year now. And I think I finally, me and God finally worked it out. So I'm really excited about it. Um, so let's get, let's get started with some prayer and then we'll dive into the word and we'll talk about how I study the Bible. Dear God, I just thank you so much for this morning, God. I thank you for working and operating internet. God, I pray and ask this morning that you would show up in spite of me, in spite of us, in spite of our sin, that you would cleanse us and make us pure, creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, God, so that we can come to your throne ready for what you have for us today. God, I pray for boldness as Christians. I pray that we could come to you with a hunger and a thirst for your word. And I pray that if for some reason we don't have that, that God, you put that within us. You give us that hunger. You give us that thirst for who you are. God, thank you for everything that you've done and thank you for what you are already doing in the future for us on our behalf, God. We praise you for it and we are just so grateful that you sent Jesus for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Okay, so I like that Tabata workout like to kick my tail, y'all. I'm telling you, it was rough. It was only five minutes, but... Jeez. <laughs> um, but this morning we're gonna read in first John chapter two, verses fifteen through seventeen. So um if you want to get your Bibles, do that and we're gonna read it together. Um so yesterday, you know, while y'all are getting your Bibles and turning there, yesterday you know that we talked about um the new commandment and how uh, if you don't love your brothers, which is not just your literal brother, which is everybody, if you don't love them, then you don't love God because God sent us here to love him and love his people. And the new commandment is the same commandment. It just includes the Holy Spirit within us that leads us and guides us. And they didn't have that in the Old Testament. Um, but the light is going out into the world within us, which is the coolest thing. Like God uses us as his walking temples. He doesn't have an actual temple with a veiled Holy Spirit anymore. We are that temple that goes into the world. We're moving. We're like tent revivals everywhere that's the cool that's the coolest way to say it like instead of having a legit block stone doesn't move building that people go to to experience the spirit of god which is what was happening in the old testament um we are like tent revivals little tent revivals that walk all across the world and just spread the love of jesus that's how we should view our mission on earth and then yesterday i posted a video about it but y'all i was well i was doing my prayer walk after we got off of our live and i was just praying and i was like god um not yesterday the day before i was praying like god help me to want to spread your gospel more like help me to go out and tell people about you like give basically like uh, the way that i was praying it was like god give me the calling for who you want me to tell about you and i am telling you y'all when you know god's voice People ask me all the time, like, how do you know that you hear from God? It's because his scripture, it's from memorizing his scripture, it's from learning his voice, it's from learning how he speaks to us, it's from learning his character. And so as I was doing that, as I was saying those things, when I tell you, I, it was a, an immediate response from God in my mind. It was immediate. It, like, it was like, wham. And he just was like, that's not that's not a calling that's a command i didn't i didn't suggest that to you that isn't something that i cherry pick people for that is a command i told everyone that the great commission is to go and tell the world about me go and make disciples that is not that's not something that is special for for certain people that is everyone go make disciples and so i don't have to give you a calling to do that your calling is the place that i've put you in in that season to go and do that you're it doesn't matter where you are you can tell people about me um and so i was like 
wow, God, okay, I see you. And so that is a part of loving the people that God has put in our circle. That's a part of loving the people that God has given us the opportunity to love. That's, that's difficult, people. It's not just saved people. We can't say, oh, I just love the people who agree with me. That is not Jesus. That is not God. Because if that was God and if that's the way he loved us, then none of us would be saved. Because none of us deserve that. None of us fully align with God. Um, He's the one that sanctifies us until the day we get to heaven. And so we love people where they are in their mess. And we talked about that yesterday. And how do we love people? We see them like Jesus does. We see the value that he placed inside of them because the value that he sees in them is the blood that he had to shed to get them. That's the value that you have on your life. The value isn't anything that you've done. The world's going to try to tell you that you in and of yourself are valuable, but the Bible tells us that we are not. The value inside of us is when we surrender to God and he makes us valuable. And that I had such a hard time time grasping that because of all the different things the Bible tells about us like um about being a woman like she's more precious than rubies blah 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 blah. and so I was like no 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 that means that I really do have worth and then I and then when I stopped and I read things like Roman I was I was like no we don't have worth outside of Christ like we do everything but follow God like we do everything but be good to people like I mean, look at the people who get on this live that don't believe in God, that just do nothing but tear us down about our faith. Like, that is not love. They, they preach that they love and they accept and that every, like, we're the ones that hate everybody. But then they hop on this, this space and all they do is tear us down, you guys. Like, that is not, that's not a love that encompasses any anybody. That's not what love is. And love is a God that sent his son to step down from heaven to die on a cross for our sins that is love when we didn't deserve it and so um that's that's a bold statement but it's the truth like we can't truly love people the way that they are meant to be loved and cherished if we don't have the love of God within us because the love that surpasses understanding the love that surpasses anything that we can manufacture on our own the love for our spouse that goes beyond anything that they can do to hurt our feelings or make us feel like we're not at the place that we should be in their heart that is a love that is is based on a decision to love love like Jesus does. That is a love that says, I'm going to love you without barriers. I'm going to love you when you don't deserve it. I'm going to love you and meet you where you are when you don't deserve my love. That's the love that we're called to love our brothers in. And so (laughs) flipping that, okay, so so we talk about the love that we should have for people and then we're flipping that, okay? And we're reading verse 15 and it says, do not love the world. So he just tells us, like, love our brothers, love God, follow my commandments. This is how you'll know that you're of me. And then in verse 15, John and his ADHD-ness, like, swapping back and forth, says, Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes, and pride of life is not of the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. This is not our home. This is not our residing place. This is not where we spend eternity. This is not it for us. This is a temporary 70-ish year span of life where God sends us into a place because he has purpose and he has a position that he wants us to put in to bring him glory and honor so that one day we can be with him forever and ever and all of eternity. And so when 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 God says, I want you to, what he's saying in, in chapter two is, I want you to love the people that I have put in your circle that are in the world. I don't want you to love the world. There are two different things. And so I know that John 3, 16 is one of the most quoted scriptures for all of Christians. And it's for God to love the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And so my thought was reading this, okay, well, there must be a different word for the world, right? There must be a different world word for world like there must be a different Greek or Hebrew word for that it's the same word so then I was like okay well why would God say for God so loved the world 
And the the um, original word means the systems of the world. The um, it, it means the systems of the world. And so why would God say, for God so loved the world that he gave his own son. He loved the world, but we're not to love the world. Why is that? And I started thinking and I was like, that doesn't really kind of make sense. But, but it does because God is the one who redeems the systems of the world, not us. God is the one who created the world. It breaks his heart how much we've fallen into sin. Like it crushes his, he created this. Like think about my kid. If my kid drew me a picture and handed it to me and it's just a bunch of scribbles on a paper I'm going to love it because he gave it to me because of who he is. And and my and I am us. I'm rec- representing us as like as as um in a relationship with God, okay? I represent us. My kid represents God in this scenario, okay? So my kid creates something. He draws a bunch of squiggly lines on a piece of paper and he hands it to me. I love it because of who gave it to me, right? So I love it because I know my kid or, you know, God's heart in creating it for me. He created it for me. He gave it to me. He had a purpose in giving it to me. He created it for me. He gave it to me. I see the beauty in it because I see the beauty through his eyes, right? Same, same with God. But what happens if I, what happens if I take that piece of paper and I crumble it up and I throw it in the trash? What's it going to do? It's going to break Pierce's heart. Like, it is literally going to crush him so much because he's like, no, I gave this to you as a good thing. I gave this to you as such a good thing. And then you crumpled it up and you didn't see the value in what I wanted you to take part in, what I have created for you. And we do that with God so much. Like, we, that's what we did with God when we choose to sin. Like, he gives us this place that he wants us to spend with him, Adam and Eve, <clears throat> and We took it and we messed it up. Like he gave it to us. He created it. He made it. He gave it to us. And then we messed it up. We crumbled it up in his face. And we said, that's not good enough, God. I want to be like you. I want to be God. I want to know the things that you know. The fact that you created this for me to enjoy is not good enough. I want to be the creator. I want to be the one that knows all of the things. I'm not okay with just enjoying what you made. I want to be the one that can make it. And so, um... It crushes God's heart. He he loves the world because he sees the value that he initially created it for. Like he wants to redeem the world and eventually he will. We know the end of the story. He comes back. He makes a new world. He creates a new Jerusalem. He wipes the slate clean and he gives us forever and all of eternity with him. Like he sees the value in it because he knows what's coming and he knows what he created it for in the beginning. And he also loves us. Like we know that he works good for those who are called according to his purpose. And so God sees value in the world because he sees who we are in him and what he's purpose for our life. Like you're so loved by God. The world doesn't give you value. All of this self-help stuff that's out there, Y'all, you can chase that as much as you want to. It will never fulfill you. You will never feel worth it. The world will always tear you down. They're going to say that they love you. They're going to say that they accept you. They're going to say that they appreciate you. And the moment that you move in a position that threatens whatever it is they're working for, they will rip the feet out from under you. They will tear you down. That That is the prideful, sinful nature of this world. It will never be good enough. You will never measure up and God says when you come to me when you come to me my memory verse for this week is Proverbs 1 chapter uh, verse 23 and it's um if you turn at my rebuke behold I will pour my spirit out and I will make my words known to you if you turn at my rebuke I'm gonna give you my spirit I'm gonna put that inside of you and I'm gonna make my words known to you aka I give you value the value inside of you is what I see for you and so when God loves the world, it's different from when he tells us don't love the world because he knows that we can't handle it. We can't handle love in the world. Like we fall into the trap of it. Like we can't, we have to approach people who are sinful with caution, right? Like we do, even if we're meant to minister to them, there's, there's a spot in our life. Like this, this is for somebody. Okay. Because I wish somebody would have told me this years ago. You can minister to people who are of the world and not let them in your inner circle, okay? 
that is important for you to know. Like you can get into life with people and still guard your heart against what they can do to you, right? That's what we should do. The Bible tells us to guard our heart. We don't open ourselves up to that. We don't when I tell you when I tell you to love your brother and get in people's mess with them, I mean get in their mess, not let them into yours. That is a different story, guys. That is a very different I have lived it. I have experienced it. I have seen it. Don't you dare don't you dare, please take my word for this and my advice. Don't you dare let somebody who has not proven to you that they are faithful to God and that they, they are truly a Christian and that they are truly living in the light of Christ. Do not let them into your life like that. Do not let them into your heart. Do not open yourself up to what can come out of you letting them into your life. Because I'm telling you, the Bible tells us even right here, in these two verses that you either work for God or you work for the world. You're of God or you are of the world. And when you let people into your mess who are of the world, they are going to tear you down. They're going to use it against you unless they are somehow drastically redeemed in Jesus name through the process. And you're going to wind up hurt. And God says like, no, that's not what I, I created iron to sharpen iron. Not the world to sharpen iron. You're you're supposed to go to people that you have that have earned your trust and your place in your life for that. And so just be very careful about that. That's a whole different story, but be careful about that. We get in the mess and we do life with people because we want to bring them to Jesus, but we don't let them into the mess that we have in our life because if we do, they're gonna tear you down. I'm not saying that they should think that you're perfect. I'm just saying, like, if you're having problems in your marriage, do not, do not tell people that. If you're having issues, unless they are your prayer warriors that have proven to you that they are of God and that they love you, do not open yourself up to those spirits. Do not let, do not open yourself up to people that are going to use that against you. If you have um, issues with your kids or if you're having issues with your job or something like that is happening, do not let people who are of the world into your circle like that. That is not, that is not the place for them. That is not, that is not what God tells us to do. You take it to God and you, and you can go to your very trusted wise, the Bible says wise counsel, your mentors who are wise and who will lead you in the way of Christ, not away from the way of Christ. Because I can tell you the moment you start talking about your marriage to people that are of the world, you open your marriage up to even more than you can even possibly wrap your mind around. Trust me, I've been there. When you start talking about issues that you're having at church with some people, you open yourself up to a lot of spirits that you should have never opened yourself up to. So take my advice. We are we are in the world. We are not of the world. We don't open ourselves up to the world. We belong to God. Our residency is in heaven. And so our problems that we have that we need prayer warriors for are only for people who have proven through their fruit that they are true followers of Christ, that they love Jesus, and that they're going to pray for us, and they're not going to find ways to tear us down using our weaknesses. That is just blatant truth. If I could ever give you any, that's what I would tell you. Um, you have to guard your heart. The Bible says guard your heart. That means guard your heart against the world. Guard your heart against spirits that are going to come and attack you. You've got enough going on. You don't need to draw in anything else to help with that, okay? Okay. Whew. Um. Man, it is always when I think, God, this is such a short passage that he shows up in the biggest way. Like, he's like, no, this is exactly what I have. Okay, so what time is that? Oh, we got plenty of time. Um, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eye, and the pride of life. Y'all, we have to fight that every single day. We have to fight every single desire to follow the way of the world because we're not perfect. We won't be this side of heaven. And so those things that you naturally are inclined to lead towards for um, comfort or whatever, you're going to have to fight that until the day that you die. You're going to have to fight against that. But but what this passage gives us is hope because we know that when we have God within us, he draws us closer to him and we don't want the things of the world. We don't crave those things. We can we can lay those aside and say, no, my God is worthy of service. Like when we, when we know his voice, 
when we're in tune to his voice, when we're listening in, we can say, no, that's not of God. I know that that voice is not of God. That doesn't align with his character. That doesn't align with his word. That doesn't align with truth. That is not of God. Period. Lay it down. That's not of God. That's how we know his voice. When when the Bible tells us um, the sheep know the shepherd's voice, that's how. Because we spend a lot of time with him and we say, okay, yeah, that that's in scripture. That's of God. You know, like, so when God calls us to do something or when God calls us to step out and do whatever, it immediately Bible verses or passages of scripture should come to mind where we know, okay, yes, that's of God. That's love. That's truth. That's peace. That's patience. That's joy. That's kindness. That's gentleness. That's self-control. All of that. But the other things, the other things, they're very tricky, y'all. The devil doesn't want you to miss heaven by a mile. He wants you to miss it by this much. He wants you to aim just a little bit to the side and miss it by this much. Because when he was tempting Jesus, what did he do? Didn't he use scripture? When he was tempting Jesus, didn't he do that? But the problem was that he was distorting it. And Jesus knew that because he knew the truth. He knew the truth of what the context was. He was He was ready. He was ready. He studied up. Did you know that? Did, did, did you know that? That did you know that um that uh Wickerman how do you know if it was really God asking you sorry I just like saw this and I don't know if you you're like meaning that meaning that but I'll answer you we don't have to make sacrifices anymore Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice he's not gonna call you to do that because Jesus already he already paid the price and also when Abram went up on the mountain and was gonna sacrifice Isaac that there was, he, he was just doing that to see if he was really going to be faithful, but he already knew he would because he's God and he's sovereign. So when Abraham walked up there with his son and was going to lay him down on the altar and got ready to sacrifice him, God had already provided a way because he already knew that he was going to be faithful in following what he had told him to do. So he didn't, he didn't actually sacrifice his son. And, and through that process, Abraham knew that he was the promised child. And so there was no way that God wasn't going to make a way for it. And so, um, And so that's that, but that doesn't happen anymore because God is, God sent Jesus and that is our ultimate sacrifice. The the price is paid. There is no more thing that has to be done to save your soul. There is no more, there is no more that needs to be done to sign, seal, deliver you. You are, you are of God if you trust in him. And so it's period. It's done. There's no more sacrifices. There is nothing else that could be sacrificed to take that place. And so that is just period. That's what it is. But how we know God's voice is the fact that we know that. We know that Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. He's not going to tell me to go get a lamb. He's not going to tell me to go get a sheep. He's not going to tell me to sacrifice a bird on an altar because Jesus is my sacrifice. He took my place. His blood covers my life. And so there is nothing more that I need. It's it. That's it. That's sign still delivered. Like I'm done. You can take it to the bank. You can deposit it and you can expect it to be there because God's what God says is the truth. Um, whew, man. Um, okay. So. I want to show y'all um, really quick because this is a really big part of how I study. This is how I study scripture. And so this method, y'all know that my ministry is called a holy hustle, which doesn't make sense to a lot of people. And you, you'd you be surprised at the people that are like, that's so dumb. Like, that's so stupid. And I'm like, but you don't understand my heart towards that. And you don't understand that I was the person that was trying to create what God wanted for my life. Like I was constantly trying to climb the corporate ladder. I was trying to do all of these things. And then I realized that the only work that you can put into this life that actually matters is the work that God calls you to. Like you can manufacture whatever you are, whatever you want on your own. But the only part that matters is giving it to God and letting him do the work in you. And so that's why, that's why my ministry is called a holy hustle because I'm an Enneagram three. I'm a very, let's get it done type of person. Um, And so, but what I learned is that you can do anything that you want, but it's going to lead you to misery. You can do anything that you want on this earth. Like God will let you buck against what he has for you. He will let you go against what he has for you. He let me. And you know, through that, I learned that nothing that I could manufacture on my own is worth giving up what God has for me. It doesn't matter what it is. If God calls you to sacrifice it, it's worth it to lay it down because the joy that he gives is more and is better than any any dollar amount, any 
anything. It's better. It's better. It's better. It's better. Jesus is better, period. And so, um, so through this, I learned, um, that that's what my ministry was going to be called a holy hustle because it's, it's about hustling holy. It's about the hustle should always be about how do we become more holy? How do we become more sanctified? How do we lean in towards the things of God? And so this was kind of born out of that. And it's the holy Bible study method. It's H O L Y. Um, and it's so simple. You read a passage of scripture, like these two verses, and you ask yourself, the H is how do we see him? So what do we see about the characteristics of God? That's the first thing we should look for in scripture before anything else, because that's why God gave us this so that we could learn more about him. That's why we have this. And so we ask him, we, or we look for God in scripture. That's what we look for. And so the first step is how do we see him? What, what, how, when we read this passage of scripture, how do we see him? And some things that I wrote down is verse 15 tells us that he demands devotion and love. He demands devotion and love. Do not love the world or things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. He demands that he requires that. Verse 16 tells us he does not create worldly desires of the flesh because it says the desires of the flesh and the desires of our eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father. So our desires to follow the world does not come from God. That is not a God, that does not come from God. Verse 17, he causes those who love him to abide forever. He is a God that wants to abide with us forever. That is such a beautiful thing. That is part of his character. And so in scripture, we see we see him through those three things in two verses. Okay. And then the O is how can we serve others or how does this point us to other people how does this help us in our relationship with others um and it's those who love the world do not love god they need salvation and we know that because we know them by their fruit and so this doesn't directly say anything about other people but when we stop and we're like okay so i focus on him first he is this how does this help me in relation to other people and with other people it shows me that those who love the world those who love the things of the world, those who are are focusing on the flesh, those who are focusing on the pride of life and different things like that are not of God. And so they need salvation. And that, that helps posture my mind to how much grace that I should have for them and how much love that I should have for them and how I should treat my relationship with them and how I should tell them about Jesus. And so it positions my mind, this method positions my mind to number one, focus on God, which is love God, first commandment. Second commandment is this, to love my people. And so what should we focus on? How can we love him more through his character? And number two, the O, how can we serve others, love others, and see others through scriptures, right? Um, Hold on. Serve others, love others, and see others. I love that. Um, just thought of that. Verse 17. Looks like we're going to have a, a guest this morning. I hear my little boy. Pierce, I'm back here, baby. He might have just went to the bathroom. Um, okay. And then the L is, in holy, is, um, how do we see God's love? So how, what promises does he make for us? What are truths that we see in scripture? Like, how do we see God's love poured out on us? And it's, it's like talking about and how we see God's love poured out on us is the promises that he gives us and the truths that he speaks over us. In this passage, we see whoever does the will of God abides forever. It's a heavenly deposit. You, once you follow God and you follow his plan and purpose for your life, you abide with him forever. Like he's the God that does that. He loves us into abiding with him forever. That's a promise. That's a truth. You can take it to the bank. It's going to happen. And so that is how he shows his love for us. And so the first two focus on what we have to focus on as Christians, right? So the first two are what focus on how we should serve him and serve others. The second two, posture your heart towards how you need to view God and how you need to change. So L, 
That's your promises. That's the things that you can hold on to when times get hard. That's the truths that God tells you. And then why is a reflection time. And it's what do you need to repent from and how do you need to turn towards God? And so through scripture, it's a mirror. It shows us how we should posture our heart more towards God. It shows us, it reveals to us parts of ourselves that we need to turn from. It helps us to understand how we need to crave Jesus more. And so when we focus on him and when we focus on others and then we focus on his love, the why is going to take, the why is just going to be natural. It's just going to come natural to us because when we're focused on him, this, this scripture tells us, it's just so perfect that this worked out on today because this scripture tells us when we focus on him, we don't want our sin anymore. We don't want the things that we desire anymore. And so, yes, I will, I'll post this in my, uh, in the, uh, I'll post it in the, the group. Um, why says if you, why the part that I wrote down, if you love the world and the desire of the flesh, if I love the world and the desire of the flesh, I don't love God. I can't serve two masters. And so that's a reflection time for me. That's a reflection for me to say, how does this, how should this reflect on me? How should this reflect on you? And so it's all God or it's nothing. That's what I got from this. Like this is, this is a deep part. This why part is the part that God will convict you of. This is, this is your walk with God. This is truth that he shows you through scripture. This is you're focusing on him. You're serving others. You're finding his love and promises for you. And then you're focusing on how, in light of all of that, you can walk closer to God and you can turn more towards God. And so, anyway, like I, I, like when God gave me that, because I've had that acronym written down for literally a year, y'all. And he, he didn't, he didn't give me that until probably a week ago. I was sitting down and I was like, okay, God, like I know. This is how I study the Bible, but I don't know how to put that into like, how do I tell people how I study the, the Bible like this? Like, how do I teach people this? And, and I, and I was wrestling with it and I was like, holy, it's just not working out. Like, it's just not working out. Like you're what, what how do I do this? Like you've put this word in my life and then you've given me this heart to teach people how to study your scripture. But then I'm like, how do I do that? And he's the one that opened this. So this is all from God. This is all from God. And so it just postures our heart in the correct way, according to his commandments and how we should view us in light of God being the authority and every other method that I have personally seen it focused too much on me like it was too much centered around what I could get from scripture and that is not that's not why we read scripture in the first place like what why why we read scripture is to learn his voice and to learn more about the God that we serve and to learn about how we can go and do his mission and the correction of ourself naturally happens in the process of that because when we focus on God, we we love him more than we love ourselves or or the world and so we want to turn more towards him and so that's what this came out of and I, I'm so excited that I finally get to share that with you guys but it just postures our heart the correct way when we read scripture. Um, <clears throat> whew, so anyway, that's what we did. And and y'all, what I what I got from this when I just sat and thought about this scripture and what it means is that God doesn't want to get sprinkled into our day. He wants to be what our day is about. Um, we we as the Americanized church and probably the church as most of a whole. Um, have gotten to where we will just sprinkle God into our day. So we think like our daily devotion or we think that, you know, reading a chapter a day or praying before a mealtime or, you know, saying a quick prayer before bed. Like we sprinkle God into our day and he should be exactly what our day is about. Like that's not enough of God. We need him every second of every day. Like we have to pray continually to him. We have to be open to to every second being about him and his word and our service towards him and loving others through that. Um, so yeah, like we, we, it's all about God. Like everything that we do is all about God. And it's the coolest thing. Like when we realize that, and it's the most freeing thing too. Like when you lay down your selfish desires to think that the world revolves around you and you may not think that that's what you think, but with with if if you think about the the term i'm not worthy 
and and it just doesn't sit right with you, then there's a part of you that thinks, oh, the world the world still revolves around me a little bit, you know. But when we posture God in the position that he should be and we realize that he's what our worth comes from, like he's the one that created us. He's the one who put worth inside of us. He's the one that calls us according to a purpose. It postures our heart so much around God and how we can just give back to him for giving us meaning and life and love and all of the things that we didn't deserve. We don't even deserve to be here. And he He did that. Like he created us. He formed us. He knew exactly who you were. If you're listening to this, all 261 of you, listen closely. God knows who you are. He knows your name. I'm going to cry because I'm just imagining somebody sitting on the other side of this, not feeling like God sees them, but he sees you. Like he sees your diligence in in serving him and loving him and wanting to get closer to him. Like he knows your name. He knew, he spoke a purpose over you before you were even born, friend. Like he knows who you are. He doesn't, he's not just some blanket God that just created a world and doesn't get involved with it. He got so involved with it that he sent his son for you. He sent his son to redeem you by his own blood, his perfect, sinless, sacrificial son. He did that for you to save you from the depths of sin, to save you from hell, to bring you into eternity with him. He wasn't obligated to do that. He wanted to because that's how much he wants you. That's the God that we serve, okay? That's the God that we serve. That's the God that we serve. There's 291 of you now. So I hope the additional 30 of you heard that. Like God knows who you are. He knows who you are. He created you for a purpose. If you're breathing, if you're watching this, he's not done with you yet. You're not finished. It doesn't matter if you're depressed or anxious or worried about anything in life or things don't seem like they're going perfect or you're in the middle of a hot mess in life. Guess what? God's right there with you in the trenches if you'll invite him in. He wants to walk through life with you. Jesus came down here. He didn't come as a deity. He came as a person. He experienced your pain. He experienced real pain on the cross. He was crying or or sweating blood. He was so stressed out about going to the cross in the garden of Gethsemane. He wants to understand you. Jesus understands your pain. Your emotions came from God. He knows what you're feeling and he wants you, friend. Like he wants you. I don't know how else. I don't know how else I can say that. And and in those times, I know I got to get off. I told y'all I'm going to be better about 545. But in those times where you don't feel like God sees you, here's what I want you to do. Because I've had to do this before. And it works, y'all. It works when the devil is trying to tell you, when the enemy is trying to tell you that you don't know, that God's not with you anymore, that your situation means that he doesn't love you, that your situation means that he's not faithful. You go to this book right here. And you find verses that you're going to hold on to that are truth in those seasons. Because this is what we lean on. It's not those thoughts that come into our mind. The sheep, the sheep know my voice. The sheep know my, the shepherd's voice. Because we listen to it. We read it. We study it. We do that because his voice is truth. When the enemy comes at you and says God's not faithful and he's forgotten you, you say no. My God will never leave me or forsake me. And you know what you do? A friend told me this one time. He said... In the trenches, when I feel like God has forsaken me, I will speak that verse over myself a million times until I believe it. I will continually say it over and over and over again. God will never leave me or forsake me. God, you will never leave me or forsake me. God, you will never leave me or forsake me. He said, and I will say it until I believe it again. And that is what we have to do. We have to speak those truths over ourselves. And, you know... You And I was going to say, like, you tell the enemy to get behind you, and you do that. But sometimes it's not just the enemy that's getting you. It's your own self. It's your own selfishness or your own hurt or your own junk that you bring in just because we're sinful and we live in a fallen world. And 
And we have to realize that sometimes it's our own self that we're battling against. It's our own sin. It's our own just brokenness that we're battling against. And so you can tell the enemy to get behind you, but you also have to to tell yourself like, no, that's not who I am anymore. Like, I don't believe those things. I That's not who I am. I belong to God and he speaks truth over my life. Not, not me. I don't have a say so in how I should feel about this situation. Yes, your feelings are valid. Yes, God says there's seasons for everything. Yes, there's seasons for mourning. Yes, there's seasons for our joy. Yes, there's seasons for happiness. But through all circumstances, we read in Philippians earlier, we can have joy. Paul was in prison when he said that. I can have joy in any circumstance, whether I have enough or I don't have enough to eat because I know the God that I serve. And if I die here, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And you know what living as Christ is? Sacrifice. You know what living as Christ is? Taking up your cross daily. Living for Christ is not he- that. He's not like referring to heavenly living. No, God says, take up your cross daily and follow me. The cross is heavy. The cross is hard. The cross is sacrifice. The cross is work. Our, our, our rest is in heaven. It's not here. Like our eternal rest is not here. We're not going to, we're not going to just be able to sit back and say, I'm saved. No, that's not what we're here for. We're here to work for the kingdom. This is a this is a this is a divine appointment. This is a calling. This is a mission. This is a mission field and we are to go. We're not to sit, we are to go. Ugh, okay. It is 5:48. So Everybody take a deep breath cuz that was a lot today, right? Um <clears throat> We're, we're going to pray and then, um, this will be uploaded to YouTube later. So if any of y'all missed it, hopefully the internet works a lot better this time. Um, I just, I end every day with saying God's so good, but he is, he's so good and he's so faithful. So let's pray and we're gonna, we're gonna go. Okay. Dear God, I come to you today and I ask that you would just fill us with your spirit, God. Give us a desire and a power and a boldness for your kingdom, God. Help us to not cower down towards the world. God, help us to love people the right way, the correct way, the way that you love people. Not not a conditional love that depends on how we feel. But God, you didn't feel like going to the cross and you, you Jesus, you didn't feel like going to the cross and you did it anyway. That's the sacrificial love that we should have for other people. We should love in in light of who you are, not in the way that people and what people can do for us because we have enough in you. Like we have fully enough for everything that we need in you. Like you are, you're so, you're such a good God and you have done more than enough to bless more than enough of us, God. You don't promise that this life is going to be easy, but most of us, we have a pretty easy life. And I, I just, I ask that you be with those who are going through difficult times right now. We all walk through seasons of that. And the fact is you care just as much about those seasons as you do anybody else's. And so I pray that you would be with those people through it, God. That you would be with those who are hurting and broken and lost. And that you would lead us closer to your cross. Help us to go out and tell people about you. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope that y'all have the best day and I love y'all so much and I'm so glad my internet is working now. (laughs) Okay, y'all have a good one. I love y'all and I will see y'all tomorrow at 5 a.m. Bye, you guys.